Hey everybody, Omar here, the Knife Sharp Guy, and I am back with a brand new background. We got rid of the uh, white towel. I said goodbye to the white towel forever. Uh, I thought it looked cheesy, so we're not doing that anymore. Anyway, this video is basically about the eight knives that I own in my collection and rotate daily uh, and use every day in my pocket. I don't necessarily use them, but I definitely carry each one every day, one a day, every day of the week. Uh, I change it up, uh, hoping that maybe I'll have an opportunity to actually use the knife. Um, but anyway, I wanted to go over uh, all eight of my knives and explain why they're in my collection and why I own them, because when people own knife collections or collection of any kind, uh, there's a reason why they own the piece, uh, There's a, and it sort of fits their personality and explains who they are as, as knife people. Uh, and you're going to find out from the way that I collect that I am, uh, I actually have obsessive compulsive disorder with my, knife, with my knives. So let's go ahead and get into it. Uh, the first piece I'm going to talk about in my collection is this guy and why I, I picked up this knife a second time. First time I, I, I picked up this piece was two years ago. I wasn't, I wasn't really happy with it. Uh, at the time, I was still in the beginning phase of my knife collecting. I, I was still kind of more in the learning phase and didn't really know a lot. Uh, but I actually thought that these things were thumb studs and I was kind of pissed off and I, I didn't understand why I was not able to use them as thumb studs. And someone told me, well, they're not thumb studs, they're actually blade stops. So that was a, a little trip there I took in my, my learning, uh, you know, my learning about knives. But when I picked up the knife the second time, I picked this one up from Blades We Love, Steve. Uh, over there, Blades, Blades We Love. Uh, I've already done a video on that. Uh, he sold this knife to me, and uh, I got it modified. He sold it to me as one of the modified pieces uh, that he already had in his uh, ar selling arsenal. I saw it. I drooled over it. I had to have it. It's mine. Um, so I got it in a nice dirty bronze uh color i actually did a full video on this you want to take a look at that you can check out my channel um because that video is on here as well uh anyway the reason that i i i bought it again is because i realized what a mistake i made and i had to have it but the main reason i own it is this is the most perfect zero tolerance knife ever made in my opinion it's also the signature piece in the entire zero tolerance lineup, much like Kershaw has the leak and the blur for ZT, it's this knife, the zero o five six two. So this is the this was their signature piece. Another reason why I own this knife is because it has everything you would want in a knife. Everything. There's they've they covered everything on this. It's got style, it's got flash, it's got fit, finish, quality, centering, and steel. CV20, are you kidding me? You don't want to have this in your collection? You gotta be crazy. The steel on this was absolutely insane, plus the blade shape. Look at that. It's got a real nice belly, and it makes a fantastic slicer at the same time. It's perfect. It is just perfect. The ergos are perfect. So that's why I had to have this knife, and that's why I recommend if you're going to get a ZT, just get this one. Make sure this is in your collection. So there you go, the ZT-00562 carbon fiber. Next piece I wanted to have in my collection was the Spyderco Advocate... Oh my God, I had to have this one. All titanium, beautiful silver piece with the uh, orange peel texturing. That was a real turn on. Another reason why I had to have it was how about duality of just being able to use the spidey hole just as effectively as the flipper. I love that. That's another selling point for me. That was another reason why I had to have it in my collection. More importantly, the steel CPM M4 steel, which is, it seems like it's a steel that's going away now. I think, uh, yeah, I think Benchmates still champions it somewhat. Spyderco puts it, puts it in their lineup, although I don't know if they've made any new knives since then. But, uh, yeah, they keep it in their arsenal. I'm very happy that they do. Um, because it's a fantastic steel. Granted, it's not stainless, uh, but, you know, you wipe it down, put a little oil on it, weight 10 oil on it to protect it, wipe it down, you're good to go. Because the edge retention on this, uh, on this steel, 
uh, is ridiculous, and the cutting power on this steel is absolutely ridiculous. I mean, this thing can hold an edge, I don't know how long, seems like forever. Uh, yeah, it's real, real super smooth. Plus, it's a slim profile. That was another reason why I had to have it. Slim knives always turn me on. Uh, the fact that it's an open construction with just standoffs, I love that. Not crazy about the half backspacers, which you're going to see in a minute, but I, I put up with it for my next knife <laughs> uh, that I'm going to show you in a second. Uh, because the way the knife was designed, I maybe completely forgot about the half, half backspacer deal. Um, but, uh, yeah, I just had to have this piece just for that reason. Steel, uh, the orange peel texturing, the smoothness, and the slim profile. So that's why that knife's in my collection. On with the Spyderco Swish Boy. This is probably the, still the star of my collection. Actually, these two knives are really the two stars now in my collection. Uh, even, even within the next four that I'll show you after these four are finished. Um, yeah. Uh, this is, these two are probably the stars. Uh, this knife is incredibly unique in every way. Uh, now, the knife is $500, uh, and a lot of people have been asking why. Um, I'm just going to try and do this really quickly. Um, the details is the reason why the knife is so expensive. If you take a look at the knife, see the handle? It's stonewashed, polished type. It's not like sandy or gritty. Uh, gritty texture, uh, like say on the uh, Benchmade Mono T lock, where you know you can feel that sandy texture. This is very smooth, stone washed, polished. Another reason, hey there, YouTube America, take a look at that. You can see my face, it's a mirror polished knife, so it actually doubles as a mirror <laughs> on both sides. Another reason, look at all the detail on this, they actually milled the Spider Co. logo on there as well as. They also milled the uh, uh, Marcin Sleesh logo on that. I love that Wolverine claw thing going on there. Unbelievable. So they milled that on there. A lot of details went into the making of this knife. Um, just, it's just perfect all around. Perfect all around. The smoothness is something that can't be explained. Uh, this knife is just as smooth as a ball bearing knife. I mean... That was another reason why I had to have it. There's no ball bearings. It just runs on phosphor bronze washers, but yet it closes like a ball bearing knife, guys. It is just absolutely ridiculous with the smoothness on this thing. It's also right for your hand. I love the way they had the knife sort of curved so that your hand fits ergonomically perfectly. Um, just absolutely beautiful. They have that nice almost full reeve integral lock on uh reeve integral um lock on there fantastic nice again with the pocket clip uh just absolutely perfect uh and that's one of the reasons why i put up with the half backspacer on this piece because of all the details that went into it i said i had to have it and it, that was it so basically they balanced out the uh, details of the knife and the steel. Now, the steel could have been a super steel, uh, but because of the cost and time effort that it took to curve the handle on this knife and make it stone washed, I mean, that was already getting up there in price. They shaved off a little bit by giving you CTS HXP steel instead of, say, CB20 or, you know, M390. Um, they just felt that for this particular piece to produce, We'll give them a good, high, premium steel like CTS HXP, but we're going to put all the money in the details so we give the knife user a completely different experience when they're using it, and they were absolutely dead on right with that. So that's why the knife is in my collection. Finally, the last piece out of the four, and then we're going to get on to the next four in my next video. Um, this is the ZT-060... Uh, nine which uh i had to have uh it was just uh it was just a piece that i had to i had to have um so, so i mean it was just i couldn't really explain 
why, but there was something about the blade shape that really turned me on on it. Sometimes you buy knives and you don't really understand why you have to have it, but you do. And the blade shape really was the number one reason why this was in my collection. i never seen a drop point blade that's so so pretty like that. Uh, it's so eye-appealing eye to me um, that I just had to have it in my, in my collection. And uh, it was just... I don't know. I really have no. I really can't explain it. But it's just a beautiful, beautiful blade shape. That was one of the main reasons. And of course, you had to have the see-through pivot on there. Was made it made it kind of nice. Granted, you need a special tool to get it. And believe it or not, the tool is still not available. I looked around. I, I as far as I know, you still can't buy it. Uh, so I was lucky that I got this piece again from Blades We Love, who made sure mine was perfectly centered, and I wouldn't have to worry about. Uh, waiting to get the tool to adjust it because it's actually, it's already perfect. Uh, absolutely fantastic. But the, but another reason why I had to have the knife in my collection, <laughs> take a look at that, folks. How about matching dirty bronze, huh? Matching dirty bronze, yes. That's another reason. See, again, it's, I love the knife. Not only when it's in my pocket, but when it's with the other knives in my collection. That's another reason why people collect. Uh, and the knife is incredibly smooth. It's also a very nice, slim knife. It's also very classy. You could wear this knife, uh, you know, if you work in an office, it'd be kind of nice to carry this in your pocket. Uh, it's just so classy. Very, very classy. Um, the grooves on it give it extra texture. I love that. And the finger grooves on there are, make it even fantastic for uh, holding in your hand. It gives it a nice, you know, good ergonomic grip on there. So, so there you have it. My first four, the ZT609, Spyderco Swish Bowie, the Spyderco Advocate, and the 060562 carbon fiber and i'm going to see you guys in a few minutes with my next four pieces and this is omar signing off hoping you'll find happiness in your next piece of sharp art see you in a bit